Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. Though by now you're probably a few weeks in, but every piece of content is a new day with a new goal and new realizations that you haven't slept in three days. Last time we covered all of the optional stuff you can grab at level 50, including a bunch of stuff you want to grab, but is not explicitly required. This time we'll be dropping back into crafting and gathering. As you can tell by the length though, there's not really all that much to go over between the two, but I did want to chronicle everything at 50, whether it's a good thing to do, or worry about, or not. And unfortunately, a lot of it you're gonna want to ignore. But let's get into talking about it. Being gatherers and all, and you can't craft without materials, let's start there. And specifically, the level 50 quests for Miner and Botanist. In case you forgot, at level 46 we got the Truth of Mountains and Forest skills. These reveal unspoiled and legendary nodes within a zone, provided the Eorzean Clock has reached a certain point to spawn the node. The level 50 quests will be testing your use of these. Normally you would just have to guess when a node will appear, or look it up. Your gatherer log won't tell you anything until after you first find the item, but these quests will outright tell you the times for the nodes. Miner's Darksteel node is at 1am and Botanist has Spruce at 9am. As normal, the game will notify you on screen when the node has spawned and the minimap will have a flashing node appear. Head over and gather. You may notice the gather chances for some of these items are going to be... painful. At least for the items you didn't come here for. Make sure to use your abilities to increase gather chances, but even if you don't, you should be able to gather at least one hit of Darksteel and Spruce. And one swing is all you need, since it's not one item per swing, but three. Gather each item once to at least mark it off for your gathering log though, and fill in the location info for future reference. Remember, the gather log doesn't tell you when and where unspoiled nodes are, but after you gather the item at least once, it will tell you every time. But a little note on the rewards of these quests. Rather than the normal items, our tool reward is blue, and the gear is green. By themselves, these colors mean nothing, but the tools are special, and I'll come back to that later. Something else odd though, is that the gear pieces are unique to each class. These can be obtained outside of this quest too, so you can get the full set, but the minor quest only offers minor gear. The botanist quest only offers botanist gear. You may want to choose the same piece for all classes, just for parity, but Armory Chess Base can be concerned with that. But you may have also noticed the items we found had a star on them next to their level. In the Gather Log, these stars go up to 3. This is a measure of difficulty. Higher stat requirements and such for more stars. After completing the level 50 quest and putting on the new gear, I have a whopping 2% high quality chance, just barely above the minimum needed, and a 77% gaza chance on a 3 star item. This shows just how far behind my gear is, even though I've been getting all the gear I can. The fact I am 51 also helps due to what is known as the expansion level wall. More prominent with crafters, your level is compared to the level of the item, and it comes with massive bonuses or penalties, but by hitting level 51, you effectively get a huge boost of stats for items within an expansion. I'll mention this again in a bit, but it means a lot. But okay, let's move on to... Blah. Fishing. The fishing quest is a bit more normal than the other quests, since we don't have a truth of oceans. Yet. 
but we'll learn from a while ago that we need to go do a double mooch for a Mazalia Marlin in North Bloodshore. The quest isn't all that hard, just make sure you have enough GP to use patience, and while that's up, hook sets. Since without it, you're going to be just praying for RNG to gift you a miracle. Two high qualities in a row to be mooched is not exactly the most likely thing without using patience. But once again after completing this, we get a special blue tool, a piece of Fisher only gear, and the notification to come back in Heaven's Word, which obviously I have already done. However, Sisipu has one other gift for us. The Beast of Brewer's Beacon. This is our introduction to... Big Fishing. To become a big fisher, you have two requirements. Either really, really love fishing, or hate yourself. I fall into the latter, but not enough to go much further beyond a surface level go over of big fishing. The first fish we are told to get is the Titanic Sawfish, but we're immediately informed that both the time and the weather must be aligned or we won't find any no matter how long we fish for in Cape Westwind. Even worse, just like the Mazalia Marlin, it's a double mooch. And this guy is just a fish you can buy off the market board. For a premium though, the limited window and general difficulty conditions make it worth a lot. And this is only the first fish of the quest. There's another after. And it only gets worse from there. Cape Westwind actually has a big fish that is similar to the sawfish and is even harder to get. And it still gets way worse. Basically, every fishing node in the game has at least one big fish. The fish colored green in the quote unquote rarity. There's a second quest in this quest line that forces you to catch a whole bunch of these guys, including this one, Namataro. This personally is the second hardest fish to catch in the entire game as of this video. Notice on my main, my fishing log is basically completely filled aside from a fish or three in the expansion. So, you know I can pack this up with actual experience. Namataro specifically has a special mechanic on top of weather and time restrictions called intuition. To proc this specific one, you need to catch the other big fish in the same location with time and weather requirements, the giant Takataro before Namataro will even appear, and it only appears for a few minutes with the buff up. This is on top of having specific time and weather requirements again. Like oh my god, why did I ever subject myself to this? And the hilarious part of all of this is that Nepto Dragon, the entire reason we started this quest line, was many many times easier for me to catch than Namataro ever was. And this was all in level 60 gear with level 60 skills, which, uh, by the way, stats don't matter beyond the minimum, or at least much beyond the minimum. Big fish never have a 100% catch rate. So even if you're level 80 and have over 2,000 gathering stats, a level 50 fish from the era when the max was 500 gathering is still going to be able to get away. Seriously, j just don't become a big fisher. But if you really, really insist on it, I may remind you all of Carbuncle Plushy. It's the best tracker personally, and it's the only way you're going to stay sane and be a big fisher. That's the... Uh... Let's get off that pain and move on to crafters. To start, there was technically another quest to pick up at level 15, but it's a bit more usable now that we're level 50 and have income and ability to craft more items. Back at Vesper Bay, 
is the Glamour Lady, who will now enable us to craft Glamour Prisms. Each book costs 3,000 gil, but unlocks the recipe for their respective craft to create prisms. Only Culinarian doesn't have one because... Are you gonna cook some Glamour? But there is more than just books to buy. There's a bunch of Glamour items that are invisible when you wear them. And there's a piece for every equipment slot and even invisible fists. But not the shield, that's in the gold saucer only. But this same shop is also now available in Mordona too, with Tataroga. But onto the class quests. Similar to the gatherers, we see a special tool and green gear that is unique to each class. Starting with Culinarian, the quest itself is just a repeat of the craft a bunch of high quality items quest but this time with four items, ooh. Get as many high quality materials as you can, but it's not that big a deal of all things considered because you probably have enough ability on yourself just to still get high quality without it all. But getting materials yourself may be too much or not a good option, or you're just lazy and wanna buy the items because of that. Well, if your market isn't good enough, World Visit is going to start becoming a lot more useful to you as you get higher in levels. Go to the main Aetherite in any of the three main towns, and the option is the World Visit button, which allows you to visit any other world in your data center, and go to it, and do whatever you want there. You can even shop there for better prices than what on your world might be offering, or might not even have a stock of. Just don't forget to return to your world when you're done. Moving on to Alchemist though, and all the other crafters, they follow the same pattern for a final quest since they're not trying to be special children like Holidarian. Follow the short quest and you'll eventually be told an item of high quality with a specific materia melded into it. It will always be a grade 3 materia, which if you haven't gotten lucky with spirit bonding, or just didn't do it, or are, in my case, a Dragoon doing a quest needing mage equipment and mage materia, you may need to buy the materia. But again, try and collect as much high quality materials as possible for the craft itself, even if the craft is hardly anything noteworthy in difficulty. Then, meld the materia you are told to meld, and finally turn in the item, and enjoy the story. Especially Alchemist. The Alchemist story is amazing. Go do it. And enjoy your rewards. But now comes the big jump that crafters get to deal with every expansion. The expansion wall. Where gathering gear is not all too big a deal when moving on into expansions. You'll suffer for a bit, but can catch up eventually. Crafting? No, no, no. If we look at the level 51 gear, high quality... The stats are much higher than what we're wearing. I mean, sure, they don't seem that much higher, but... Well, let's take a quick detour. Back in Mordona, we have Guiding Star. He will introduce us to a couple of things. The first is Supra and Lucius tools, or functionally, the craft and gather relics of a realm reborn. But a lot less work than a normal relic. These are where the blue tools we got from the level 50 quest come in. These are to be upgraded into Supra and Lucius. Some rare or hard to find items are involved here, including items that come specifically from leaves and only leaves. Just don't bother with these tools unless you really want the related achievements. They are not worth it even for the stats. You could also come back to this later, either way, when you have much better gear. Speaking of better gear though, the other thing Talon has is Master Books, levels 1 and 2. The Master Book 2 book requiring a craft from Master Book 1, requiring a craft you currently have, with a rating of 2 stars. This means it's hard, so let's try it. Gather the materials and... Oh. Wait. Wait. Wait, what? Oh. Oh! I spent 200k just to show this. 
I got a whole bunch of the level 51 gear just to up my stats to both over 300 and even had to do some melding just to reach the minimum required. And remember, this is a two star craft. But okay, I make the item, make it high quality, trade it in for a master book and use it. Then in the other recipes tab, I head over to the master books one and oh no, three star crafts that need nearly 400 of each stat. And then, and then there's a master book two as well. And there's four star recipes in there. And those need 450 craftsmanship and 400 control. And then look at the level 51 recipes. Recommended, but not required craftsmanship, is 468. The jump in stats is more than double what you have from just natural progression. And all of this on top of the level 51 wall. Though that's easy to get past nowadays. I'm even already level 51. Just don't bother. Don't even try it. Ignore all of this until later. Just keep going. Brute force ahead. There's no point in dealing with the Realm Reborn Ed game. It's just not worth it. You'll have to give up on trying to high quality for a bit, but it's better than wasting your time trying to gear up at level 50 to a high degree. Especially all considering in Heavensward, there is one major final piece of the puzzle that can easily grind you up all the way to level 80 as a crafter and even gatherer. The firmament awaits. But to get there, we have to return to the falling snows. It's time. We have to finally gaze heavensward. Thank you for watching this final episode of the Era of A Realm Reborn for Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. There wasn't many things to go over this episode, but I wanted them to have their own section due to the length and mostly unimportant. But I'm going to keep this end section short. We have a big journey ahead, and that's what's important. And may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And a special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Ethan. Ethan Olson. Good job, you two. <laughs> Jamie Cotterell. Kathy Nock. Meowfie. And Valor LLC. If you would like to become a patron, the link is down below in the description. Thanks for watching.